Another thing that filmmakers care about, and I think is a perfect metaphor for what women care about, is a concept called dynamic range. Um, oftentimes, when you are looking for a camera, your first camera, a film camera, whatever the case may be, one of the things that you used to compare and contrast is dynamic range. There is a very complex explanation that I don't think I'm qualified to deliver, so I'll give the simple explanation. If a camera is really good, it can see details in very, very light areas of a shot and very, very dark areas of a shot simultaneously. So if a camera is really bad, then black is black. Like let's say a woman is wearing a black dress, it's just gonna be black and she has light skin, it's just gonna be light. But if you're shooting her with a camera that has high dy dynamic range, you'll be able to see the texture in the black dress. You'll be able to see the color variations in her skin, even though her skin is really bright and her, her dress is really light. And I think similarly, women care a lot about that ability to see, observe, experience, enjoy the nuance in humanity. And I think that it stands in direct opposition of what men are taught to be, because everything we're taught to be is anti-human. Cause think about it like we we're taught to be warriors we're taught to be um providers we're taught to be protectors and literally to execute any of those things at the highest level you have to be anti-human you have to be non-human to a degree right you 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 feel pain but you don't stop that's not human you're sad but you still work you still persevere, you don't cry, whatever the case may be, that is anti-human. You know death is impending, but you still run full speed into battle. You know death is impending, but you still march down into a coal mine. Like men are taught to be the antithesis of human. Because my soldiers do not buckle or yield when faced with the cruelty of this world. My soldiers push forward. My soldiers scream out. MY SOLDIERS RAGE! And womanhood, femininity, I think in a, in a way, you know, unlike masculinity, celebrates the dynamic range of humanity, right? And again, going back to our John Boyega and Tyrone example, even just visually, there are a lot more details in the dark and in the light of his character. And, and I, I think I could be very, very wrong, but I believe that's how women view men. That's how women view the world. You know, one of the things uh, Courtney and I would uh, debate about was Tupac. Like many women, Tupac was her ideal archetype of a man. Tupac was all the contradictions that women love to imagine in one package, right? He was a poetic dude who was gangster and had money and was soft and hard at the same time. And all those contradictory things, my perspective is that he was playing a character. Like he was, you know, he was also a theater guy. So, I mean, it, it tracks, but, but when you hear most women mention, try to, describe their ideal man they're describing Tupac essentially now what's funny is there are even interviews of Tupac where he talked about how he also saw the dramatic shift of the female attention he was getting before he was famous and the unusual female attention he was getting after he became famous but that's 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 beside the point but it goes back to dynamism that I think women idealize in a way that nobody actually explains to us as men and, and which is why I think we have such a hard time and we become so frustrated and we have difficulties managing our expectations of who we need to be and how women are going to or not going to respond to it. You'll hear a lot of women say, for instance, I want a man who is in touch with his feminine side. I think that's what they're, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about that dynamic ring. Now, if I was having a separate conversation with just women, I would tell them, hey, Here's why some of these expectations of who you think men should be stand in direct opposition of other expectations that you think we should be based on our capacity to be these things in tandem, right? Because again, women are filmmakers, so they're looking at the world through the lens of their movie. Oh, you also see, I think, especially nowadays, uh, a lot of women are into true crime. Uh, they, did a, they did a poll and they found out that the Jeffrey Dahmer movie or documentary that came out on, on Netflix and even the other guy, uh, 
not Manson, the other guy. Most of the viewers were women. Most of the viewers of true crime documentaries are women. Most of the viewers of First 48 and Snapped and all that good stuff is women. So do you ever do a demographic breakdown of who watched, like does Netflix have a demogra demographic breakdown of who watches those crime shows? Because it's mostly women, isn't it? The, anecdotally, that's what everybody says. There was yeah. a funny bit on Saturday Night Live the other night that was like, you know, what, what do ladies do when they're home alone? You know, wait, 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 you know, then they like throw on the murder shows. Yeah, why is that? I don't know. It's a weird thing. And when we were making Night Stalker, there would like, we would get to the, the, the point in the interview where it's finally... You know, I would ha I would ask everybody like, okay, so s for some reason or another, this guy becomes like the Jim Morrison of serial killers because like when he's paraded through the courtroom, all of a sudden he's got these like groupies and fans, and they're sending him. And I had gotten access to all of the like naked pictures that the girls are sending in, you know, because this author had written a book about him, had all this stuff, and I was like, and you always have to kind of ask that awkward question of like, so why does this guy become this sort of crazy? sex symbol object of desire you know obscure object of desire it, it starts cluing you into the the fact that women have a women have a relationship i'm not going to call it healthy or unhealthy but women have a relationship with the macabre women have a relationship with the macabre that i don't think we are as familiar with right like women are because i think also they're not as familiar with violence or the consequences of overt violence the way that men are historically there there's more space to fantasize about the pageantry of it right the the the, the idea and, and good point kw like the whole uh, men versus bears thing like the, the, there's more space to to fantasize about it. and even like now recently instagram has been recommending these clips and tiktoks about like women's dark fantasy novels right and and what they're into and all that stuff and they're married but they've got a boyfriend in this book i say all that to say i think one of the things we have to do as men is divorce ourselves of our expectations of women whether those expectations were placed on us by media or placed on us by our mothers or placed on us by our aunties sisters whatever the case may be you know this this puritan ideal that we have of who women are I think the earlier you divorce yourself of it and you make peace with that, I think the better off you are. Because I think the men who end up being traumatized, the men who end up having a hard time are the ones who either, I'm gonna call it a detox, right? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost like when you're getting off a substance and, and your body goes into that state where it's even worse than when you were on the substance. I think that's what's going on with our expectation of who women are. And I think on the other side, whether you use a theory like this, that women are filmmakers and they care more about interesting than safe <laughs> or any other uh, framing, it's easier for you to manage expectations. I mean, another example that comes to my mind, I saw uh, this video of Michael B. Jordan at the time where he was playing Killmonger. Uh, and and some, some woman commented like, yo, I've never seen him look this sexy in my life. And literally the only difference was he had some hair and he had a grill in his mouth. That, <laughs> that was it. But again, when you start thinking about it from the perspective of a filmmaker, Killmonger as a character was more textured. You could make the argument was even more textured than T'Challa himself. And if you notice the women of the men that do really well with women, the men that women find irresistible, um, they're not always like phenotypically good looking men. Like even now you hear women say, I want a nigga who's medium ugly, whatever that means, right? Phenotypically, they're not always good looking men, but what you'll find is the stories associated with them, their experience with the guy, or, you know, just the aesthetic that he, he, he gives across from a filmmaking perspective, far more interesting. I think there's something to be said about um, how we can, we as men, adjust ourselves and also adjust our assessment of women and how deep in the fantasy she is based on this understanding. Hey, if you've made it all the way to the end, please click that like and subscribe button. Also share this with somebody that you think would gain value from it. Click the thumbnail at the top if you want the full video. Click the thumbnail at the bottom if you want a video that's closely related to this. 
Again, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys for watching. Check out some more of our content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.